Hi everyone, I'm Felix, and I was born with the weirdest allergy. An allergy to dust. It had a weird smell that always made me sneeze uncontrollably. And as if that wasn't weird enough, I also came from a family of detectives. My paternal great-grandparents were FBI agents. They had a son who became a CIA agent and married another agent, after which the two had a son, my dad, who also became a CIA agent, and fell in love with my mother, a private investigator whose parents were both FBI agents and whose grandfather worked as a KGB spy during the World War. Then they both had me, the handsome one, and my sister, the ugly duckling who was a huge pain in my butt. Stop bumping into me! Stop being so close to me. Get your own tree. For as long as I could remember, Mum and Dad had been training Maud and I to take after them as detectives, just like the entire family was. Maud did pretty well, but I wasn't so great. I was very clumsy, and I couldn't help it no matter how hard I tried. Do I really have to be a detective? I hate spying on people. Don't say that. We're giving you basic life skills in case anything bad ever happens. Never trust anyone. Ever. Uh, my parents didn't trust anyone around them, and because of that, we barely had any friends. In fact, the first time I made my first friend, they chased him away with all their weirdness. Who gave you the chocolate and sent you? The Mafia? The KGB? Answers now! Uh, my granny? After that day, I never saw him again, and I was pretty mad at them, but I got over it quickly. Meanwhile, at school, I loved to spend most of my time in my favorite place, the lab, where I could study dust particles and develop a cure for my allergy. One day, I was brainstorming when a girl sneaked up behind me. Hey, what you doing? And holy smoke, she was pretty. Whoa, I, um, didn't see you there. I'm Felix. I mean, Felix. Sorry. God, I wish the ground could open up and swallow me didn't have any conversation skills with girls because my parents' distrust chased everyone away. <laughs> I'm Diana, and I'm a new student. My parents just moved here. What brings them to Cottingwood? Uh, just work. So, what are you busy with? I have an allergy to dust, so I'm trying to come up with a cure. Whoa, that's super cool! Can I touch? Um, sure. After that day, Diana and I became super tight friends. We sat next to each other on the school bus, and she waved goodbye to me whenever it dropped me off first. One day, I was on my way home from the bus when I ran into Maud at the store. Thought you were Voldemort. You shouldn't be sneaking in on people with that face. Says the nerd. By the way, who's the girl you were waving at? Hmm, she's called None of Your Business. I walked away from her before she could say anything more. The next morning, I missed the school bus and had to walk all the way to school. On my way, I bumped into Diana. Hey, you missed the bus too. Yeah, seems like we're both unlucky. We walked to school together until we came across a miniature diamond-crusted Santa, sitting quaintly in a show glass in the middle of the town square. What's that? It's a Cottingwood Christmas tradition. Santa is rumored to be from here, so this was built in his honor. Everyone believes that there has been a lot of good fortune to the town since this was erected, especially with Christmas approaching. It looks so valuable. Is it safe to leave something like that out here? It's guarded by security, so I doubt it'll get stolen. What a super interesting tradition. I love your town. Christmas here will be the best. Come on, let's go, or we'll be late. Diana and I rushed to the school, and later, when we were on our way back, we noticed the crowd had gathered around the statue we had been talking about this morning. Curious, I asked someone what all the fuss was. Our Santa relic has been stolen! How? It was just here this morning. Felix showed it to me. Well, someone's stolen it. This Christmas is going to be bad. Why would anyone steal Santa? The entire town was in turmoil. When I got home that day, my parents also seemed stressed about the entire situation. This has never happened before. Who'd steal Santa? I bet it's those new neighbors. It's not a coincidence that Santa suddenly goes missing when they moved here. What new neighbors are you talking about, Mom? I really hoped she wasn't referring to Diana's family. Here. Mom suddenly whipped out her phone and shoved it in my face. To my surprise, it was. How do you already have their pictures? When they moved in, I did some background check. Get this, they moved out of their old town within two months of staying there. They've been doing so with all other towns for years. Maybe they have their reasons. Not everyone is evil, Mom. Suddenly, Maud appeared behind me and looked at the picture on the phone. Hey, that's your little girl? She's not my little anything. Shut up, Maud. I tried to shush Maud, but Mom and Dad already heard her. And soon enough, their attention was on me. Felix, it's time you went on a mission like your sister. Your mission will be this girlfriend of yours. You'll use your friendship with her to investigate her family and find clues connecting them to the robbery. Huh? What? I'm not doing anything. And she's not my girlfriend. If you don't, we'll have to do it ourselves. 
I couldn't let that happen. My parents were super weird when they didn't trust someone, and they could make me lose my friendship with Diana. I had to agree to the mission. Spying on Diana behind her back was really hard. I felt like a terrible friend, and each time she asked if something was wrong. But I knew I couldn't even tell her the truth. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. Then one day, she asked me out to dinner with her family, and I agreed. After all, this was what mom and dad wanted, right? If I could establish Diana's innocence, they'd be off her back. Dinner with Diana and her parents was fun. They were pretty cool people who showed actual interest in my science experiments, unlike mom and dad. Felix, right? Diana said you were a scientist developing some sort of cure? How's that coming along? I'm actually close to finishing it. I just need some ghost orchid seeds, but they're hard to find around here. You're just in luck, kid. I have some from our trip to Cuba. My husband and I are globetrotting reporters, so I frequently collect souvenirs from each country we visit. That explained Mum's discovery about them moving from one town to another in a short time. Really? That's awesome! After the dinner, I followed Diana's mom to her room to get the seeds, and on my way out, I came across a door that got me really curious. It had a huge keep off sign pasted to it. I wondered what was in there, but I opened the door and was attacked by a cloud of dust. My allergy struck in, and I started to sneeze uncontrollably. At that moment, Diana walked in on me and ran over to my side to help. Oh, Felix! What's wrong? Are you all right? She looked around until her gaze settled upon the open room in front of us, and she turned to me with a frown. Snooping around my house? I I can't explain. It's Santa. Santa? You think I stole it? You're a jerk, Felix, and I want you to leave my house this instant! She had a really mad look on her face that I had never seen before, and I had to leave. When I got out, my sneezing stopped and I felt a little better, so I went home ashamed and angry at my parents for ruining another friendship for me. But this was the last time. As soon as I got home, I found Mum and Dad waiting for me with high expectations on their faces. Well, how was it? Did you find anything incriminating? God, they were beginning to annoy me to no end. No, I found nothing. And thanks to you guys, you've ruined another friendship for me. Honey. Leave me alone. I ran up to my room. The next day when I got to school, I searched around for Diana and finally found her in the cafeteria, alone at a table, and approached her. Diana, about yesterday. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to snoop around your house. I'm also sorry for yelling at you like that. I didn't mean to. It's just that the room you opened is an old basement with a rodent problem from the previous tenants, and we didn't want an infestation in the main house before the pest control people could arrive. Ugh, I understand. I really hate rats. Right? They're so tiny and annoying. Diana and I reconciled and became inseparable. <laughs> she always came over to my house. Dad and Mum never said anything about it. Guess that, after my attitude from that day, they felt quite repentant. But Maud, she was a constant pest and always had something to say. Oh, look! It's the nerd and his girlfriend! What are you two up to this time? Back off, Smeagol. Nothing here is for your small brain. Maud laughed as she picked a tube of some chemicals I just mixed and sniffed it. Mmm, smells like vanilla ice cream. I wonder what it tastes like. No, no, Maud. That's my allergy antidote. It's still Maud, in progress. Don't... don't before we could finish our sentences, Maud took a small sip and Diana and I stared at her curiously. Are you all right, Maud? You weren't supposed to drink that. I wasn't done with it yet. Calm down, Albert Einstein. It was just a sip. I, what's that smell? Suddenly, Maud's nose started to grow red and she began to sneeze a lot. What smell? <laughs> that awful scent. Oh, I need to get out of here. Maud bolted from the room, and throughout the day, whenever she came close to me or my room, she sneezed like crazy. As a result, she began to avoid me and claimed that she was allergic to me. Typical Maud. Now I was tasked with making an antidote for her, too. During the week, I got so busy with developing the antidotes that I missed Mum and Dad's presence in my room one day. Oh, I, uh, didn't see you two there. Honey, your mom and I have been thinking of a way to show you how sorry we are about that day. Why don't you invite Diana and her parents over for lunch? We'd like to know our neighbors a little better. Really? Yes, Felix, I think it will be a great bonding moment for everyone. I phoned Diana excitedly and asked if her parents could come have lunch with mine. She quickly asked them and they all agreed to come over. During the lunch, Maud couldn't make it because of her Felix allergy, but the conversations flowed smoothly regardless. Until mom and dad went a bit off the mark and began to ask weird questions. 
I love the diamonds on your neck. They remind me of a certain diamond-crusted Santa. Where did you get them? Have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? Like a Santa statue, for instance. I realized what they were up to. As Diana's dad dipped his hand into his pocket to pull out his phone, Mum and Dad suddenly leaped across the table to confront him. I knew it! You're a thief! Stealing a cutlery, are you? What? I'm just trying to get out my phone. So, this is why you invited us over? For you and your parents to embarrass us? Come on, we're leaving this silly house! Diana and her parents left the house angrily, and I faced Mum and Dad, disappointment written all over my face. Honey, we didn't mean to go that far. We just wanted to make sure- Save it. I'm sick and tired of you guys always ruining everything. I didn't want to hear any more of their excuses. I needed some space. So I walked out of the house and just strolled down the street. Lost in my thoughts, but as I walked, I noticed empty shops and people huddled together, whispering. What was wrong this time? I approached a friendly looking shopkeeper and inquired. Hey, please, do you have any idea what's going on? Do you live under a rock? Someone's been stealing from our town for weeks. First Santa, now our goods and personal belongings. Something has to be done or Christmas will be bad for us all. This was more serious than I thought. A serial thief was on the loose in my town. I also noticed that in the spot where Santa had been earlier, some flowers were growing there. They weren't just any flowers, they were ghost orchids, just like the ones Diana's mom had given me. But that'd mean, no, I couldn't bear to think of it. I turned back and strolled home so confused about everything. As I passed by Maud's room that night, I noticed she looked in a worse state than before and felt really bad for her. Hey Maud, do you need help? Go away! That scent! It's everywhere! When I turned around to leave, that was when I noticed the ghost orchid seeds on her table and the Santa statue hiding in the open drawer. Maud, what's this? I asked as I picked the statue up. I uh, can uh, explain! And these! Felix, uh, I was speechless as a lot of thoughts invaded my head. Maud's sneezes what? got worse, limiting her what? speech and I had to leave the room back to mine. I sat at my table frustrated. Something wasn't right. A lot of things weren't adding up. I could feel it in my bones. Since we were kids, Maud had never had reason to steal. So why now? I got up from my desk to find Mom and Dad and found them in the sitting room. Mom, Dad, we have to talk. If it's about the dinner. No, it isn't. It's about the thief. I found the Santa and Diana's <gasps> orchid seeds in Maud's room. Our baby girl isn't a thief. Exactly. I've thought about this whole thing, and my guts tell me there's someone out there trying to frame Maud or Diana's family. The person thinks they're smart, but we're detectives, and we're smarter. My parents had looks of surprise on their faces, but I couldn't blame them. I thought you didn't like being a detective. Well, I just wanted you and Mom to give me some breathing space. Oh, sweetie, you should have just said so. And for real, we're really sorry about the dinner this time. Mom and Dad apologized over and over, and after a while, they got out some UV lights for the investigation. We started with Maud's room, tracing handprints and footprints in the dark. A shoe print that belongs to none of us. That's our first clue. We'll follow the shoe prints. I'll be out of your hair soon, Maud. I want to tag along. You don't have to. No matter what I said, Maud insisted, and we had no choice but to agree because Maud always did what she wanted anyways. When we left the house, Maud's sneezing subsided. We began to follow the pattern of the footprints all the way to Diana's, Diana's house? house. We found Diana and her family packing up their things out of the house into a big van. Diana, why are you guys moving out this late at night? She avoided my eyes guiltily, and Maud's <sighs> sneezing came back tenfold. Ugh, that scent! It's so strong on you! It's choking me! I have to leave! That was when it dawned on me. Maud wasn't allergic to me, she was allergic to Diana. The only reason she thought she was allergic to me was because Diana was often around me, so I carried some of her scent. Diana, why is Maud allergic to you? Did you mess with my antidote? <sighs> yes, I mixed your antidote with my scent. It wasn't meant for Maud, it was meant for you. I wanted you to stay away from me, I'm a bad person. How? Suddenly, Mom exclaimed. Oh my god, you guys are the thieves! I found her looking at the back of the van Diana's family were loading their things into. Inside were a lot of stolen items from the town residents. I couldn't believe my eyes. All this while, you've been the thieves, and you've been tricking me. I'm so sorry, Felix, but I wasn't tricking you. My daughter has a condition called kleptomania. She can't help stealing, and that's the real reason we've never stayed long in any town. I was the one who planted the evidence in Maud's room. Your parents were onto me. We were going to return everything stolen tonight before driving to another town. 
I stared at Diana, and she really looked sad. I felt bad for her. I moved closer and grasped her hand in mine. I had no idea you had a mental condition, Diana. You could have told me. I was ashamed. Your parents didn't like me so much. What if you stopped liking me too? That'll never happen. There's a reason I always stood up for you to my family. It's because I believed you were different and special. Oh, Felix. I'm so lucky to have a friend like you. Diana hugged me before turning towards her parents. Dad, Mom, I'm sorry for being a difficult kid. You've always been by my side, and you're the best parents ever. Come here, honey. Diana hugged her parents, and the moment felt so passionate it almost made me tear up. Dad and Mom stepped up to Diana's family, looking remorseful. We're also sorry for making your stay in Cottingwood uncomfortable. Please don't travel. Your daughter can get help here. We know a good mental health facility. Diana's parents accepted Dad's offer, and the following day, we helped them in returning all of the stolen items. We put Santa back in his spot, and in a week, I finished my antidote. After drinking it, Maude and I got better. Hmm, it worked! I guess we will have a scientist in the family for a change. I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you, Maude. It really means a lot. I was finally accepted for being different in my family, and I think this was the best Christmas ever. We wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. After the festive season, Diana left for the mental health facility, and I kept in touch with her. And then, one day when I visited her, she had a surprise to show me. They asked us to paint the most special person or thing in our lives. Great! And what did you draw? Wow, Diana, this is beautiful. Wait, does that mean I'm your special person? Diana nodded shyly, and then kissed me on the cheek. I turned red, and then took her hand and drew her closer to me. You're special to me too, Diana. Hi, I'm Collins, prince of a faraway kingdom called Setia. I was born to the two worst parents ever. Dad and Mum were the king and queen of Setia, and they were the worst the town had ever seen. They shamelessly stole and ate the town's money, and also believed that we were above everyone else because we were royals. My brother, Gerald, who was two years older than me, was exactly like them. Selfish, and a big, empty-headed hunk who was only interested in growing his intimidating biceps and nothing else. I came out different, though. Every time I got a chance, I helped people, even if mom and dad didn't like that very much. Once, when I was 10, I heard this girl crying by the castle gates. <laughs> Somebody! Anybody! I need help! My mom needs medication and we don't have any money! My brother, Gerald, walked up to her and pushed her away from the gates, and then he was so rude. Get away from the castle, peasant. There are doctors all over the village. Go ask them for medication. This isn't a hospital. I don't have any money for that. The king and queen took our farmland away. Please help me. Get lost. I decided that that was enough, but before I could do anything, the girl stood up to my barbaric brother, unwavered by his scare tactics. You're a cow, and you don't scare me. I think I had fallen in love. Gerald angrily shut the gates on her, and that was my cue to sneak through them later with a bag of coins that still from his cloak, as vengeance for what he did to her. I found her at the same spot, looking so helpless. I can help you. She turned to me with big, brown eyes, which I'd never forget, and then I took out the bag of coins and gave it to her. Thank you so much. She hugged me and ran off before I could ask her her name. As I stood up, my leg kicked something. It was a locket. Inside of it was an old picture of a man and a woman I guessed were her parents. I kept it and promised to return it whenever I saw her. But after that day, I never saw her again. In the next few weeks, I busied myself with caring for my plants as Gerald continued to be a menace. Hey Colin, knock knock. Not again. I slapped a hand across my face, exhausted of hearing his dumb jokes. It's a big, sweet, juicy piece of chicken. Nothing you'll ever know about. Vegan, real men eat these instead of ugly, foul broccolis. Well, why don't you have this? I swung a corpse flower in his face, and the smell drained the blood from his face. He screamed like a girl, and I burst out laughing. <laughs> Years passed. A harsh winter hit my village, destroying all of our crops and plunging us into months of famine. As everyone struggled to manage, my parents continued to harass them for everything they had. And as soon as they realized that the people were too poor to sustain their extravagance, they organized a search party. You brave men and women are the only hope of Setia. I put my strong sons Gerald and Collins in charge of you. You'll leave the town and search for ripe farmlands and other places once you find anything. Report back to the palace. I wish you luck. We left that day and trudged through the deep snow searching for farmlands until a thick tornado struck the group on the fourth day and separated us. 
I was whirled away from Gerald and the group. When I woke up the next morning, I found myself in a lush forest. I walked around, admiring the greenery around me. Suddenly, I heard a growl behind me. Chilling fear shook my bones as I turned around and came face to face with a seven-foot bear. My skin prickled with goosebumps, and just when I thought I was done for, a girl jumped out of the bushes and grabbed me by the hand. We dashed through the dense bushes until we'd given the bear some distance. I think it stopped chasing us. Thank you for saving me. I'm Collins. What's your name? I'm Raven. She stood straight, and I was faced with the most beautiful lady I'd ever seen. She reminded me of one of the strong, tall Amazons I often read about in books. What are you looking at? I tried to speak, but I felt like a cat caught my tongue. Uh-oh! It seems like it found us again! Come on! We ran until we reached a small cottage in the middle of the forest. Welcome to my humble abode. You live here all by yourself? Isn't it too dangerous for you? <laughs> Nothing can scare me. In fact, they should all be scared of me. The confident way she spoke gave me a sense of deja vu, and the brave girl from years back came into my thoughts. You know, you look quite familiar. I've heard a lot of pickup lines from guys, but that one is new. A for effort, but I don't think we've ever met handsome. Wait, I'm really serious. I brought out her locket from my pockets. I'd been carrying it around with me since that day, hoping it would lead me to that fierce owner who had faced Gerald, the girl I'd fallen in love with. And now, she was right in front of me. Remember this? You dropped it all those years ago when I helped you with money for your mom's illness. She looked at it as if it were a foreign object, so I opened the locket and showed her the picture of the people inside. I thought she recognized them for a moment, but her expression changed to a frown. I told you I don't know you! That silly locket isn't going to change my mind! And have you never heard of doppelgangers? Uh, it's just you look so alike. I closed the locket and slipped it back into my pocket, quite disappointed that she wasn't the one. Raven let me stay with her because I had nowhere else to go. I learned quite a lot about her in that while. How she loved music and loved to dance. We went on food gathering trips together, and in the process I showed her all of my favorite plants and what I loved about each one. This is the Middle Mist Red. It's one of the prettiest and rarest flowers in the world. It looks like a rose. But it's not. It's actually a type of camellia flower. It'll look pretty on you. <laughs> Why don't we try? She turned to the side, and I slipped the flower into her hair. Well, what do you think? I was stunned by her beauty. There were no words to express how beautiful I thought she was. It looks so beautiful on you. Thank you. She grabbed my arm. Come on, there's something I want to show you. I followed her as she excitedly led me past some beautiful glowing trees to a sea with an old ship tied to an abandoned dock. We found a lot of boxes in its storage. Wow, so many boxes. What do you think are in them? Why don't you open one and find out? I opened one of the boxes and was shocked to find it filled with diamonds. Where did they all come from? I have no idea. They're my ticket out of here, to somewhere better. We could share them if you want. Raven and I spent our night on the ship, staring at the stars and talking about our futures. I forgot all about Gerald and everyone until the next morning, when I woke up and found myself surrounded by Gerald in the search group. Today is your lucky day, Collins. Your big brother has come to save you. How did you find me? You weren't easy to find, but thanks to my excellent tracking skill, we tracked the debris from the tornado to here. Gerald started to walk around, looking at everything in awe, and I just knew in that instant what he had in mind. Look at all these plants. It can feed an entire town for years. As if that wasn't bad enough, my back collided with one of the ship's boxes which fell and spilled diamonds. I shifted to hide them from Gerald, but it was too late. Diamonds too? We're about to be the richest royal family in all of Europe. None of the things in the forest belong to you. Don't tell me you'll starve an entire town because you're a plant freak. Gerald directed the search party to take whatever they could find, and there was nothing I could do to stop them. Meanwhile, Raven had disappeared into thin air. I looked around for her, but she was nowhere to be found. I really hoped she was safe. I watched my brother and the group clear most of the forest in a single day, and we returned home. Mum and Dad had greeted us and then directed the guards to take the diamonds to storage. Aren't we supposed to distribute everything to the kingdom? It's still for the people. We're just helping to preserve it. 
but I knew they were lying. When they went to bed that night, I crept into the storage room and stole some food, which I gave to the villagers. Gerald and the group returned to the forest every day to get more food, and I followed them on several occasions, hoping to see Raven. I never found her, but I did discover some Middle Mist flowers, which I brought back to the palace and planted all around. They made me think of Raven. A month passed since I last saw her, until one night I had been sleeping when a loud commotion in the palace woke me up. I went to check on the source and was shocked to find the servants running around in terror. But that wasn't my biggest shock. It was Raven right in the middle of the chaos. In fact, she was causing it. Ha <laughs> ha! Run, Whips! I'm your new queen now! Raven? Oh, hey there, my prince. Or should I say, princeless? Her guards laughed like she had said something funny. What do you think you're doing? What does it look like? I'm taking over the kingdom from your bad parents. What? I thought you wanted to travel and explore the world. That was all a lie I told you to get you to trust me. I knew it wouldn't be long before you royalties revealed your greed and you proved me right. Just like all those years ago when you gave me a bag of stones instead of coins. What? That wasn't me. It had to be that moron, Gerald. He had filled the bag up with stones, not coins. I'm sorry. I honestly thought they were coins. That means the locket is yours. Why did you lie then? I couldn't give up my act, but I'm going to need it now. It's all I have of my parents since I lost them both to illness because of your family. I guiltily returned Raven's necklace to her and looked around the throne room suspiciously. Where are my parents and brother? Sleeping soundly in their beds. You don't think those flowers in the forest were just there, right? Thanks to these guys, they helped me put some sleeping powder into the flowers and I planted them just where you'd find them. I know how hard it is for you to resist your favorite plant. I couldn't believe Raven would trick me this way. I had been nothing but kind to her. Anyways, I have a coronation to plan. So please, find yourself to your new quarters, which is the dungeon. I was thrown into the dungeon the next morning. Dad, Mom, and Gerald were all thrown in there as well. I keep telling you never to mix with poor people. I hope you've learned your lesson now. For days, they wouldn't stop bickering about how everything was my fault. I wish I could be anywhere else. My wish was finally granted the next week. You, the queen seeks your presence. I was escorted out of the dungeon to the throne room where Raven sat majestically. She motioned me forward and I approached her. This is hard to say, but I need your help, Collins. Now why on earth would I help you? I know I took your parents' crown away, but they've done worse. And you threw us in a dungeon. I never even did anything to you. Fine, I'll let you all out. Happy? Yes, that's better. Now that's settled, I need you to teach me how to be a proper queen. The kingdom is in debt, and I want to marry Frank, Prince of Mayland, to save us. I heard he's your family friend and very wealthy. He wasn't my friend. He was one of Gerald's thick-headed dumb friends. And hearing Raven talk about marrying him felt like such a punch to my guts. Fine, I'll teach you. Thank you, and for what it's worth, I'm really sorry about everything. I enjoyed the time we spent together in the forest. She avoided my eyes as she said the words, but I wasn't falling for the pretense this time. You don't have to lie to me any longer. I said and then walked away. As promised, Raven released my family from the dungeon and placed them in a house with thick security. On the other hand, I was free and helping Raven with her lessons. Steady, steady. Thanks. Raven was a quick learner. In no time, she was doing perfectly. I think I've gotten the hang of this. I spun her around as we danced, and when her skin touched mine, my heart felt like it was going to burst into a thousand pieces. I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't notice when the music stopped, and I drew Raven close and kissed her without thinking. She returned my kiss, and when we were finished, she looked at me with those big brown eyes. I think I'm in love with you, Raven. Collins, I'm sorry, but let's pretend like the kiss never happened. I have to marry someone else. She ran out, leaving me standing alone in the ballroom and since that day, she began to avoid me. The following week, Frank arrived in Setia, and Raven hosted a ball in his honor. Guests from all over the world arrived, and I was jealous as I watched Raven laugh at something he said. I had no idea what came over me, but I grabbed a glass of drink and headed towards them. As soon as I reached, I lifted it and spilled it on. Raven? What did you do that for? I glared at Frank. It was like he had seen me coming and moved out of the way, just in time for my drink to spill on Raven instead of him. You have no right to harm the queen. I'll protect your honor, your majesty. 
Suddenly he shoved me. I shoved him back and we began to fight, ruining the entire ball. Raven was furious with me. This was always your plan, to embarrass my position as queen and ruin my chances of finding a husband. I should have known better than to trust you. She walked away from us while we were still on the floor and Frank quietly slipped out from under me and out the door. Moments later, my parents and Gerald stormed into the room in anger. Where's that throne thief? As they burned with rage, I spotted Gerald and Frank shaking hands. Thanks for getting us out. You're the best, bro. I knew it! Frank had been up to no good, but before I could do anything about it, Raven came into the room and faced my parents. You're all supposed to be locked up. How did you even get out? Foolish girl. You didn't think an old-time friend of ours would just marry you while we were still being held hostage, did you? Raven whistled, and all of a sudden her crew gathered behind her. If you want the throne, you should know I'm not going down without a fight! Gerald's eyes glinted with excitement at the mention of a fight, and the two sides squared up. I decided I had enough of everything and yelled, ENOUGH! Everyone turned to look at me. None of you deserve to sit on the throne. I'm sorry to say, but you're all bad rulers. Dad, Mom, and Raven, you don't even know how to rule! Everyone noticed the commotion and gathered around as I spoke. They nodded their heads to everything I said. I think this time the people deserve to choose who ruled them. Yeah! That's bloody ridiculous. Our generation has held this throne for years. As he attempted to walk up to the throne, Raven and her warriors blocked him. Colin is right. This town needs better. The crowd agreed with me, and moments later, a vote was held and I was elected to be the king. But I didn't want it. I don't think I can do it. Raven walked up to me and touched me on the cheek. You're the perfect leader, Collins. You're kind, passionate, and gentle. This town needs you. Not me or your parents. I allowed vengeance to cloud my mind and make me into a bad person. But you never hated me in spite of it. You still loved me. Raven's words filled me with a lot of courage. I'll only be able to do this with you by my side. Then I'll be by your side. I'm sorry about everything and I love you too. She threw her arms around me and kissed me. And the next day, the town crowned me king. I looked over my subjects and made one promise. I will be a better king to you than my predecessors! Then I looked at Raven and sneaked out a middle mist flower from my pockets, which I tucked behind her ear. At least this one isn't poison. Oh, come on. Raven <laughs> laughed at my inside joke and hugged me. I love you so much, Raven. Please, be my queen. Really? Of course I'll be your queen. I turned to the crowd and raised Raven's arm. And this is your new queen. Aloha. My name is Dawn, and I live in the Amazonian rainforest. Please like and subscribe. Growing up, I lived in the jungle with my amazing nature-loving dad. We didn't really have a house. We lived in makeshift tents near a local tribe that dad was filming for one of his numerous award-winning documentaries. My mom was a famous talk show host in the United States, and she only visited dad and I once or twice a year. When I was 13 years old, dad was attacked by a caiman and passed away. A few weeks later, mom told me that we'd be moving to the United States. I tearfully said goodbye to my best friend, Hiro, as my mom waited impatiently. Will I ever see you again? I'll come back, I promise. We quickly did our secret handshake, then I turned and left. From the moment we got off the plane, I felt like an alien. People pointed and stared at me. Mom, why are they staring? Because you're dressed like a caveman. Why don't you wear the clothes I buy for you? They're all designer dresses, Mom. Not exactly jungle friendly. Well, we're not in the jungle anymore. You need a makeover. Cora, is that your daughter? I was startled by a sudden flash in my face. A man with a camera was blocking our exit from the airport. Get that camera off of her face. I need a photo for my blog. The man walked around my mother and shoved the camera back in my face. I took several steps back, but the man kept advancing, so I pushed my suitcase and tripped him with it. You owe me a new camera. Mom took my hand and literally dragged me to the nearest taxi. The next day, a video of the incident was all over social media with headings like, Cora's jungle daughter attacks reporter like the wild animal she is. As you can imagine, my first day of school wasn't so pleasant. There are so many buildings. How will I know where to go? You'll get used to it. That's all the advice my mom gave me before she drove off, leaving me stranded. It didn't take long before the other kids took notice of me. New girl, what's your name? I'm Heather. Dawn. Like the morning? Yeah, like that, I guess. What's with your hair and your clothes? You live in the forest or something? Actually, yeah. She touched my hair and made a face. 
Ever heard of shampoo? Oh my god, did you live with animals? I knew a mean girl when I saw one, and I wasn't about to let Heather make me her victim. So I grabbed her hand and squeezed. She tried to snatch her hand back, but I held on tighter. <gasps> I stepped right into her face and sniffed her, then widened my eyes. You heard that right. I sniffed her. Ew, what are you doing? I'm making you my friend. That's how my fellow animals and I make friends. You're my friend now. I lied. That wasn't actually how we made friends. But I liked freaking her out. I released her hand and she took several steps back. Stay away from me, you creep. My dad is the principal and if you touch me again, he'll expel you. Heather didn't bother me again after that. All she did was roll her eyes every time our paths crossed. Mm. I could live with that. <laughs> As months went by, I started to love my new life. Mom got me a smartphone and a laptop and I spent hours teaching myself how to use them. It was tough adjusting to this new life. But by the time I was in senior year, I had gotten used to this civilized world. One morning, Heather and her flock walked into class gushing about some boy. OMG, did you see his eyes? I can't believe he's living in your house. Well, dad's the principal, so... You're so lucky. Just then, the principal walked in followed by a tall and very handsome boy. Something about the boy looked familiar. Attention, everyone. I'd like you to welcome this year's exchange student, Hero. I couldn't believe it! Standing there was my childhood friend. Before I could stop myself, I leaped from my seat, ran, and threw my arms around him. I can't believe it's you! Hero remained stiff and didn't hug me back. I released him and stood awkwardly as the whole class watched. Don't you remember me? Uh, yeah, I do. Hi, Don. He looked past me and locked eyes with Heather. Excuse me. I slumped in my chair, wishing I could make myself disappear. What just <laughs> happened? Later that day, when I approached Hero, Heather stood up and blocked my path. Stay away from my boyfriend, weirdo. Boyfriend? Did I stutter? I waited for Hero to deny it, but he remained quiet, so I walked away. One evening, I was out walking our dog when he suddenly got excited and started to bark at a tree. You're so silly, Rufus. It's just a tree. But Rufus barked even louder, so I decided to check out what had him so excited. Hey, look, it's a chameleon! I pulled Rufus's leash, ready to keep walking, but then I remembered something. When we were kids, Hero loved chameleons! I knew what I had to do. I picked up a stick and nudged the chameleon until it coiled itself around the stick. Bingo! I was so excited to go to school the next day. I carried the chameleon in a cardboard box walked straight up to Hero and placed it on his desk. What's this? It's a gift. I waited eagerly as Hero opened the box. As soon as he saw the chameleon, his face broke into the cutest smile I've ever seen. He picked up the chameleon and started to pet it. It was a perfect moment. Until... Oh! Get it away from me! Ugh! Heather was such a drama queen. I tried to calm her down, but she lost balance and fell, taking me down with her. I ended up in detention because Heather told everyone that I attacked her. That evening, I sat in my room reliving the moment Hero saw the chameleon. The smile on his face made me melt. Dawn, you have a visitor. That was strange. I never had visitors. I went to check who it was, and my heart started racing when I saw that it was Hero. Hi, Dawn. I'm here to return this. Hero held out the cardboard box with the chameleon in it, and my heart sank. I thought you liked it. I... I do. But it's freaking Heather out, so I can't keep it. It's okay. I can keep it for you, and maybe you can see it when you visit. I can't. Heather will not like that. Why are you so afraid of Heather? A loud honk sound came from outside. I'm sorry, I have to go. Hero bolted out the door, and when I ran after him, I saw him get into Heather's car. Back inside, Mom took one look at the chameleon and demanded I get rid of it. But I got it for Hero. I have to keep it in case he changes his mind. Forget about the boy. You won't be around much longer anyway. What do you mean? We're leaving at the end of the week. What do you mean we're leaving? We are going back to the jungle. What? My charity organization is doing an important project for the community. Come on. I thought you'd be happy we're going back there. Before, I'd have jumped on the chance of going back, but that changed when Hero showed up at our school. Can't you work on it from here? Mom ran a charity organization, but she had employees who did everything for her. Not this time. We're leaving and that's final. I tried to say goodbye to Hero, but as usual, Heather never let me anywhere near him. Leaving for the village and knowing that Hero wouldn't be there made me super sad. But on the other hand, I was excited to see everyone else. I felt both nostalgic and sad when we arrived. 
everything reminded me of dad, and I felt tears well up in my eyes. Mom surprised me by taking my hand and squeezing it. You're gonna love it again here. This time even more. I have a surprise for you. Wait till you see. See what? That. I... I don't understand. How? It's our house. Isn't it perfect? We even have internet. It was perfect, sure. But I couldn't help but notice how it stood out like a sore thumb, while the rest of the village looked the same as it did when we left. Weeks went by, and I still hadn't gotten a chance to see and talk to my old friends. Mom was eyeing me like a hawk and forbid me from leaving the house. One afternoon, however, I decided to stage a prison break, so I climbed through the bedroom window and jumped. I landed on some bushes and only got a small scratch on my arm. I ran all the way to the footbridge that led to the local school, only to find that the footbridge was gone. Instead, a bunch of canoes were docked by the riverbank. When I was a kid, I watched Dad use a canoe all the time, and it looked so easy. I could do it too, right? Determined, I pushed one canoe into the river and climbed into it. Big mistake! I barely had control of the paddles, as strong waves rocked the canoe back and forth. It was not long before the canoe tipped over, throwing me into the cold, brown water. Help! Somebody! I screamed and splashed around, but I ended up swallowing gulps of disgusting water. Dawn? Hold on, I'm coming to get you. Was that Hero? I had to be hallucinating. Dawn! His voice sounded far away, but seconds later, strong arms grabbed me and dragged me out of the river. I collapsed on the ground and puked brown water. What were you thinking? You could have drowned. I, um, why are you back? My mom is unwell, and after you left, I was miserable. I don't understand. You barely spoke to me. Dawn, I'm so sorry. Heather, she threatened to have her dad kick me out of school if I didn't do what she wanted. So she forced you to be her boyfriend? Yeah. She did it to make you jealous. She even asked me to kiss her, but I said no. Why did you say no? Because there's only one girl I want to kiss. Ugh. I hated that girl already. Oh. Okay. She's a lucky girl. I have to go. I was about to leave, but Hero turned me toward him and kissed me! Suddenly, my clothes weren't so cold anymore. The kiss probably lasted seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. We held hands all the way home, but our happiness was short-lived. Mom took one look at our drenched clothes and exploded. Where have you been? I'm sorry, ma'am. It's all my fault. Hero was clearly lying so I wouldn't get into trouble. No, it's not. I'm the one who- Don't cover for him. This boy is nothing but trouble. But he saved me! Enough! Go to your room, now. And you, leave. I didn't see Hero for several weeks. Then one morning, he burst into my room. Hey, what's- Dawn, where's your mom? She's not home. What's going on? Someone demolished the village school during the night. I think your mom had something to do with it. What? What makes you think that? Last evening, I saw her sitting inside a really nice car talking to a man I've never seen before. Okay, that's weird, but what does it have to do with the school being destroyed? I just saw the same man driving a bulldozer on the school grounds. What? We need to go there. Now! Hero and I paddled across the river and found angry villagers gathered. There he is! Hero pointed at a pot-bellied and balding man in a dark suit and sunglasses. At first, the man seemed unbothered by the chaos, but then he turned his red face to us. Listen here, you fools. My name is Mr. Baldwin, and what I'm doing here is for your own good. I'm building a five-star hotel that will attract tourists to your pathetic village. Do you know what that means? Jobs. Money. We booed him and continued to protest, but by nightfall, we were all so exhausted, so we went home. The moment I got home, I marched straight to my mom's bedroom, but it was locked. Mom! Mom ignored me and avoided me for days. Clearly, she knew something. By the end of the week, I was so frustrated that I decided to take matters into my own hands. With the help of Hero and my camera, we took photos and videos of the construction. I interviewed Hero, his mom, and some of the villagers about how the school was demolished and the sorry state it was in before. Then we posted everything on social media using my laptop. It was a lot of work, but it meant that Hero and I spent lots of time together, so I wasn't complaining. As weeks went by, my post started to get attention from people all over the world. Some were lawyers offering their legal assistance, and others were powerful politicians. Soon enough, Mom found out what I was doing, and she was not happy about it. Don, you need to stop these online campaigns, and stop interfering with this project, or I will confiscate your camera and laptop. What happened to you, Mom? 
I thought you ran a charity organization that fights for people like Hiro and his community. Mom looked really sad, but she didn't answer me. That night, I was woken up by angry shouts. It sounded like it was coming from the living room. Your daughter is treading on dangerous grounds. You need to make her stop or you will lose everything, including this house. I spoke to her, but she's a stubborn girl. Also, her campaign is gaining huge support. I'm starting to think that letting you destroy the school was a bad idea. You should do the job I'm paying you to do. Remember, this house and the money I paid you could be taken away as easily as it was given to you. As soon as he left, I walked in to find a distraught mom looking pale and shaken. I heard everything, mom. I thought you cared about this village. Dad would be so disappointed in you. She broke down, and I held her for a long while before she calmed down and finally spoke. Mr. Baldwin is a very rich man. His company built his house for me as a bribe to let him grab the school's land. But that's illegal! Don't you think I know that? I wish I could stop him. You can. All you have to do is tell the truth. I ran to my bedroom and brought my laptop. I sat next to Mom and started a live stream. Talk, Mom. The world is watching. Mom confessed to everything that she and Mr. Baldwin did. The stream was flooded with angry comments, but some applauded her courage. TV stations flew in reporters to cover the story, and Mr. Baldwin and Mom were arrested. Of course, we lost the mansion, but as Mom served her jail time, I went to live with Hiro and his mom. We oversaw the construction of a new school funded by my online campaigns. A few months later, Mom was released and she came back. I'm so sorry for everything, honey. I will do everything I can to improve this community for real this time. How about you start by helping us carry sand from the river? We're building a footbridge. But I just had my nails done and- Mom! Okay, okay, let's go. The end.